Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem. Largest combination with bitwise and greater than zero. I know most of you guys don't like bitwise problems like these bit manipulation ones, but I will say this one is not too bad. We're given a single parameter, which is an array of positive integers. If we take a few numbers, let's say the first two over here, and we were to bitwise and them together, you take each bit, and if both of them are one, then the output is going to be one. If they're both not one, then the output is going to be zero. So if you take these two and you were to and them together, the output would be this, one followed by four zeros, because this is the only position where a bit is set in both of the numbers. And so knowing this, what we want to do is find the maximum number of elements that we can choose from this set of numbers. In other words, we want to find the largest combination. The order of the elements doesn't matter. We want to find the largest or longest combination of elements such that at least one of the bits is going to be set in the output. So for example, if you were to take a few numbers uh, like these, you have one, one, zero, and then you have zero, one, one, and then maybe you have one, zero, one. Well, if you take all three of these and you and them together, you're going to see that, first of all, these two, they're both not one. So like in the output, just adding these two together is going to give us this, which is zero, one, zero. And then you take this one and and it with that. And you see that clearly they are inverted. Like this is what we have now, uh, zero, one, zero, and then one, zero, one. Anding these two together is just going to be all zeros. So clearly with these three numbers, it's not possible. We can only pick at most two of them. So if we were given an input like this, the output would be two, not three. We want to try to maximize this but there's only so much that we can do. So knowing that, how do we go about solving this problem? Well, it's a combination problem, right? So we can't possibly do better than two to the power of n because for each of these, we're gonna have a choice of whether we include it or not. And if we wanna find the longest combination, well, this is what we have to do. But the thing is, we don't have to find the longest combination. We just have to know the length of it. And in this example, the answer was two. Which combination is that? Well, it could be either this one or this one, and I think it could even be this one as well. So yes, we can avoid the brute force backtracking solution, and this is how we're going to do it. We just want to know that at the very least, there's gonna be a bit set in one of the positions. And we know that for any given position, let's say this one, it will be one if and only if every element in that position that we chose, like these are all the elements we chose, if all of these have a one bit set there. And it's not like we need to have two bits set in the output, we only need at most one. So let's try to be greedy. Let's ask ourselves, what is the longest combination that we could create where this bit happens to be set? Because in general, we're not gonna be dealing with arbitrarily large integers, probably. 32 bits in most cases is gonna be enough and that's not gonna be super inefficient. So let's go with that. For each position, try to figure out the max that it could possibly be. Well, for this one, how would we do that? And it's very simple, just count the bits. So in this column, just go through all the integers, let's say that's an O of N operation, and count how many bits are actually set, like how many numbers have a bit set in that position, two of them in this case. And so we could do that for every single position, and that will tell us what is the maximum streak or longest combination we can have where this bit is set and this bit is set, et cetera, et cetera. And so we can store this, let's say within an array that is gonna be 32 bits, that's relatively small, so we can just assume it's constant size, and thus the time complexity of all of this is going to be linear, or you could consider it 32 times linear, which, you know, that's a constant and is the size of the input array. And from that array itself, what do you think we're going to do? Well, in this case, all of these numbers are two, but uh, let's consider this example over here. Unfortunately, I did not line these numbers up, but I will quickly just do the dry run for you. We can see a bit is set, uh, well, we have to start from the right. So here we see two of the bits are set. In the next spot, it looks like three of them are set. And I think in the next spot, four of them is set. And I believe that is going to be the result. So here in the fourth position, we have a bit set, fourth position, fourth position, and uh, fourth position there. 
There might be a few more of these that are also four, but none of them are gonna be larger than four. So in this example, our answer would be four. Now let's code it up. So I'm gonna create that count array, which is initially gonna be all zeros, and it's gonna be of size 32. Given the constraints of this problem, we could probably get away with making it a less than 32, but I don't think that really matters. So I'm gonna go through every number in uh, candidates. While this number is greater than zero, I'm going to get the bit of that number, like the first bit, we can do one anded with that number to get that. Either this will give us a zero or a one. And then we can take that and actually add it to count at index i. Now, what is index i in this case? Well, I'll actually just make a separate variable for it. So initially, we will say we're at position zero. And so this will update position zero. And then we want to update the rest. So let's increment i. And let's also update n as well. So we just used the first bit so we can shift it to the right by one and shifted to the right by one. So eventually it'll be zero and then the loop is gonna stop. But until then, we're going to be counting the number of bits in this number, like counting the individual bits. After that, we can just go ahead and return the maximum in the count array. Now let me run this. You can see that this works and it actually is pretty efficient, practically speaking, but in theory, we can actually do better than this. Specifically, the memory. We don't actually need an array because when you see what we're doing here, we're going through every number and then we're counting the bits in that number, all 32 of them in the worst case. But wouldn't it be easier? Like, assume I have these numbers, I'm just writing some arbitrary binary numbers. Let's say I'm in this spot. I could go individually through the first number and just count every single bit in this number, or I could count all the bits in the first position among all of the numbers. I could say I have a bit here and a bit here that gives me two total bits in the first spot. And if I do it that way, then I can keep track of what my max was among all of the positions, and I don't need to store the counts in an array. Let me show you exactly what I mean by coding this up. So I'm gonna get rid of this. Instead of going through the candidates, I'm gonna go through the position. So I'm actually gonna swap these two loops pretty much. I might as well just get rid of all of this at this point. I guess I'll write on top of it. So for I in range 32, all 32 positions. We want to count the number of bits in the ith position. I is gonna start at zero and the count of that position initially is gonna be zero. And then we're gonna go through all the numbers for every number in uh, candidates. If one ended with that number is one, we're going to increment uh, the count. So count plus one. But this time we need to know which position are we looking at? Well, we're looking at the ith position only, only the ith position. How do we get the number there? How do we know if the bit is set? Well, we can take one and shift it to the left by I, I'll wrap that in parentheses, and then we have the and there. If you want to, you can actually condense this into like a little ternary operator. So add one to the count. If uh, this is a true, I'll just copy and paste it, else add zero, and then we get rid of this. That's not much of an improvement, but it makes the code a bit more concise. And then after this, so now we know how many bits are in the ith position among all elements. To maximize that, let's declare a result up here. Initially, it's zero. That's what we're trying to maximize. It will be set to the max of itself, as well as the count on this iteration. Now we can get rid of everything down here, but you can see that this is definitely similar to what we have up here. So I will get rid of that. And then down here, we will return the result. Let's give this a run. And you can see it works. And this time it's actually less efficient on the real runtime. And I guess that makes a little bit of sense because I can see why this code would not utilize like CPU caching as much, given that these elements are stored in an array. It probably makes more sense just to count all the bits within an individual element first before moving on to the next element but there might be other reasons as well. I think that's probably one of the big ones, but also maybe the constraints of this problem influence that as well. Anyways, I just think this is honestly more interesting to think about than actually solving these problems nowadays. So that's kind of why I was talking about it. CPU caching uh, is the term I was talking about, if you're curious. Anyways, thanks for watching. Check out Neatcode.io for a lot more, and I'll see you soon.